was scary, but it could have been a whole lot worse. Recovery beginning now after demolition crews take down two cranes at that collapsed uh, Hard Rock Hotel site. A uh, total of three workers were killed in all of this. To Hard Rock International Chairman Jim Allen, who joins us right now. How does it look there now, Jim? Well, first of all, obviously, our prayers are with the families, you know, certainly a, a major catastrophe. The surrounding businesses, you know, all that economic impact is something we're trying to focus on. But obviously, we move forward. All right. So the plans are to continue the construction after this. Where does that go? Well, we certainly have to work with the city and obviously with our developer and partner there. Um, it's important to want to move forward, but we certainly have to work through the process itself. Will, will it delay the facility oh, significantly? Oh, quite a bit. Right? Significant. Right. Yeah, are we, you rethinking it at all? I don't think we're rethinking it, but certainly the structural integrity of the, you know, of the building itself is in question. So if the building has to come down completely, then obviously that puts us back two years. All right, two years. Yes. Well, um, but it didn't do any damage to the nearby French Quarter. A lot of people were worried about that as well. Uh, but obviously, these three deaths is red concerns. I know you don't do the building per se. This is a construction crew, what have you. Uh, has it prompted you to change how you go about this in the future? Who you check on? Who do you, you, you contract to do the work, et cetera? We certainly, you know, ask that question to ourselves internally. Did we do the proper due diligence? Right now, we think we did. You know, these things do happen. You never want to lose sight of the fact that we have human loss here. And to, to us right now, that's the most important thing we're focused on. All right. I, I also, years and years ago, you, you worked for President Trump. And, and, of course, he made some news by reversing himself on this G7, hosting it at, at his Doral Club. Uh, and then Hard Rock came up as a possible alternative venue. Is that true? Well, we have the world's first guitar-shaped hotel, you know, a right. $1.5 billion expansion. And we'd be happy to host the G7. You know, we think that would obviously be a very exciting thing for our brand. And certainly we have the facilities to do so. All right. Now, they haven't even decided whether Miami could be a potential location right now, but are you interested in it? Have you put in any dibs for well, it? Well, we've not put in any okay. bids. And obviously, the security associated with something like that, we would really have to work through. Based upon the fact there's gaming, you know, in our institution there, that I, my guess is they probably would not have a lot of interest, but certainly we yeah. would uh, love know. to have the conversation. Three of the countries have gaming, so it's, it's possible. Let me ask you a little bit about the environment for Hard Rock. And I mean, we're talking about it. You're globally, I think, 80 some other locations around the world. Right? Uh, 252 in 75 countries. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I, it was the countries I was right. So you've heard about all the dust ups going on across the globe, you know, in London with the protest movement on Brexit. Mm -hmm. And of course, we've seen it in, in, in Spain and kind of laying on all these other uh, concerns. Uh, do you worry what's going on globally in some of these other operations where you're in these hot spots. You know, I think there's some areas that are hot spots, but when we look at the Hard Rock brand, international gateway city, so Barcelona, London, yeah. Athens, you know, these are the areas where we're expanding, and we believe those cities are going to be around forever, but certainly we have to be respectful to the culture and the local political environment. All right, but do people avoid those facilities when they're in the middle of dust-ups like yes, this. Yes, 100%. Do, right? Yeah. We had a terrorist attack in Barcelona a few years back, right, and right. we saw literally double-digit declines in our cafe operations there. Are you associated with being a Western kind of a attraction so that you, you, you get undue attention being that? Well, you know, the Hard Rock brand is one of the most recognized brands sure. in the world. So we truly are a global brand. But I think anybody that really studies us knows that we're based here in the United States. But certainly we're a brand of music, the world's largest collection of music memorabilia. So really it's about the educational experience. And obviously, you know, the hotels, the casinos, the restaurants, the retail is all part of that entertainment experience itself. You know, what's interesting. I had forgotten that you're the, the first uh, operation that has North American Indian tribe purchasing it and 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 that that has changed the landscape completely um for north american indians and beyond sure where do you see this going next well, you know, we've got the, the business has more than tripled since we purchased it back in 2007 is when wow. we actually closed on the transaction. And frankly, we've had our best year ever. Most importantly, we've got another 30 some hotel deals, another 11 casino deals that are actually, you know, happening, not potentially happening. So things are really good for the Hard Rock brand. right So now. for the online gaming that's popping up in a lot of the areas near where you are, mm -hmm. uh, how does that play out for you? I mean, there's a lot of people in this business now. 
Well, we have the Hard Rock Casino in Atlantic City, so we are in the online and the sports betting business, and actually in other jurisdictions. I certainly think personally in the next 10 years that is going to have a dramatic change to the gaming industry in general, whether it's Las Vegas, maybe Macau to a lesser extent. But if we look at the big markets for companies that are not focused on online gaming, I think that could be a strategic error. And I should disclose our parent company is even dabbling in this, we, isn't it? We understand. Uh, we understand. <laughs> so let me uh, finally get a take on the economy. Obviously, that's important for you. Um, you, you. You look at the numbers, they still look good. You look at the consumer sentiment numbers, they look good. You look at earnings right now, they look good. Um, by and large, they're beating estimates still early. Mm -hmm. But how do you see things going? You know, people always look at a market recovery and an economic recovery that's a little long in the tooth, impressive, but we have an outlawed economic cycle. So what do you tell people who get worried, hey, one of these days? Well, the first thing is, you know, we focus on our ratings. We have an investment grade rating from Moody's, Fitch, and Standard & Poor's. So our balance sheet is by far the strongest in the industry. And by the way, that is unprecedented. Unpre the hat trick level of support from them, you know, all three, but go ahead. It's never happened before never. in the gaming hospitality industry, right? So that's number one. So we look at a potential correction or recession that may occur. We know we're not in a scenario where we have to be worried about restructuring debt. I think inevitably it's going to occur. I mean, it's just a cycle in the economy. There's been a lot of positive things based upon, you know, the Trump administration's, you know, changing of regulation, tax cuts, corporate tax trusts. Frankly, they were very beneficial to us. But as you start lapping those numbers, it becomes more difficult, obviously, to grow the business. Do you worry if he's not reelected, uh, that whoever takes his place reverses all of that? You know, I think moderation is a good thing. I think going in one direction in either side too far obviously creates, you know, a little bit of a challenge. I think the balance... That sounds like a very nice way of hedging your answer. <laughs> it's difficult. And, yeah. and frankly, we're not just a U.S.-based company. That's so true. what happens with Brexit really matters. What happens in Barcelona or China, you know, where frankly are, we're in a process in Japan really matters to us. So those things are equally important. If Britain never breaks away from your one way or the other. Does that hurt you? 1971 Hard Rock started in yeah. London, so <laughs> we just opened up a beautiful location in Piccadilly. We will be there no matter what occurs. All right, one way or the other. Jim right. Allen, the Hard Rock uh, Cafe CEO, much, much more on that. Including